Hi, I'm the Bomb, and in this video I'll be guiding you through the final normal mode encounter in Old War, Yag saran In this video, I'll discuss each phase individually. Before I begin, I would just like to mention that Yag saran is an extremely difficult fight. Each phase was designed with difficulty in mind. Don't be surprised if your guild finds that each phase becomes a wall that you must overcome through trial and error and improving from that. Prepare to spend countless hours here and a lot of gold on repair bills. Secondly, there are alternative strategies for this encounter, but this is the way my guild su successfully defeated Yogg. We begin in Phase 1. In this phase, Sarah must be killed through the Guardians of Yogg Saran. In order to do so, the Guardians must be killed very close to her while she stands in the center of the room. A total of 8 Guardians must be killed near her to begin Phase 2. Positioning for this phase is quite easy. Have everyone camp up by the door and kill the adds there. Assign about 3 or 4 ranged players to stand near Sarah to burn the adds when it's kited there. Situational awareness is definitely mandatory in this fight. There will be green clouds slowly circling the center of the room where guardians will spawn from periodically. If a raid member stands in the cloud for about 2 or 3 seconds, they will spawn an additional guardian for the raid to deal with. This only makes this phase more difficult. Guardians of yogg -Saran do a spell called Dark Volley. This should be interrupted at all times because it deals 10,000 shadow damage to everyone and reduces healing received by 25% for 10 seconds. When a guardian dies, it will explode and deal a massive amount of damage to anyone within 15 yards. This damage is great enough to one-shot a clothy. Guardians do not have much health and are easily burned as you're witnessing in this video. It is mandatory that your raid know how to stop DPS. Dots should stop being thrown on the ad at about 60%. DPS should all refrain from damaging the Guardian at about 30-40%. to 40%. This ensures it doesn't explode on the raid, but on Sarah. Once the Guardian gets to about 40-45% to 45 health, a tank must communicate his taunt to the other tank and begin to kite the ad down to Sarah. At this point, any ranged interrupter should be interrupting Dark Folly. Once the ad is close enough to Sarah, the ranged assigned to burn this ad need to finish it off. The tank that is kiting the ad should always be topped off on health or else he may die from the AoE. In Phase 1, Sarah has three abilities that are also debuffs. Abilities include increased damage done but also taken, healing you but causing shadow damage, and damaging you but slightly increasing your physical damage done. When Phase 2 begins, clean up any additional guardians you may still have alive. Remember to have the tank kite them away from the entire raid when they're low on health so they don't explode and kill everyone. In Phase 2, no more Guardians will spawn, but you'll have to deal with three new types of tentacle adds. Crushers, Corruptors, and Constrictors. Crusher tentacles are the primary burn targets. They have a lot of health, but can be burned at a significant rate. No melee should ever attack this tentacle at melee range, or they will get one-shotted. Crusher tentacles have one main ability that the raid always needs to worry about, and it's called Diminished Power. It has a decently long cast time and should always be interrupted. If this ability is cast, the raid will receive a 5 minute debuff, reducing damage by 20%, and this debuff can stack up to 4 times. Having any stack of diminished power up can result in an overflow of tentacles and a wipe. Corruptor tentacles are the next type. These do not have much health and can be hit by melee. These tentacles should be started by melee prior and after a brain phase. Rain should burn these tentacles while waiting for a new crusher to spawn. Crusher tentacles have 4 main abilities that are more of an annoyance than anything else. For the sake of time, I won't deeply discuss all of them. However, Draining Poison is a mana burn, Curse of Doom is a dispellable dot, Apathy is something that slows you down and should always be dispelled, especially on those who enter the brain room. Finally, Black Plague is an ability that stuns you periodically for a minute and should be dispelled. The final add is a Constrictor Tentacle. These look exactly like a Corruptor and should be the primary melee target. What these do is grab a nearby player and hold them within their grasp until they die. While they have them, they will inflict a good amount of physical damage every second. The constricted player must obtain heals and help immediately. It is possible to heal in a constrictor. The second part of phase 2 is brain portals. Around yogg a total of 10 portals will spawn at about 60 seconds in and about every 30 seconds afterwards. These portals can take players to one of three areas, Stormwind, Wormrest Temple, or the Shadow Vault. 
When you are there, you will have to kill tentacles that deal 60% of your total damage. Upon killing all of them, the brain room itself will open and the tentacles upstairs with the range will all be stunned for the remaining time of induced madness. While killing these tentacles, you will notice skull shooting beams at you. These beams deal damage and reduce your sanity by 2% per tick. To avoid these, just simply put your back to them. Induced madness begins immediately once portals spawn. The raid has a total of 60 seconds downstairs with the brain. Killing the tentacles should only take about 20 seconds, which leaves you with 40 seconds to burn the brain. The brain itself has to be brought down to 30% to start phase 3. Ideally, you should do this in 4 portals or less. Each portal phase, you should be aiming to do at least 23% total damage on the brain. Once induced madness has about 5 seconds left on it, players need to begin to leave the brain room by clicking the portals on the sides. Prior to even having to leave, players need to position themselves in front of one so they know where their exit is. When clicking the portal, you should not stop clicking until you are spit out because sometimes one click doesn't do the job. If you don't get out before induced madness is cast, then you will go insane. This is a mind control that significantly increases your DPS and health. Before even leaving the room, the raid needs to communicate where the people in the brain room have to run to view with the raid. Consistently sticking together is needed for this. Phase 2 is when your sanity becomes a factor. Sanity is the amount of control Yogg-Saron has on you. It starts at 100 stacks and persists throughout Phase 1. Upon entering Phase 2, your sanity will begin to lower itself from Sarah, Yogg, and the brain room. However, around the room you will notice four green beams of light provided by the keepers. Standing in this light will regenerate your sanity. Ideally, you want to regenerate sanity when it reaches about 30 to 40 stacks. Finally, in Phase 2, Sarah has a few new abilities. A Chain Lightning ability, a Fear, a beam that follows the player that's feared, and a Brain Link. Brain Link occurs on two raid members. These two raid members cannot go more than 20 yards apart from each other or else they will begin to take damage. Signifying Brain Link is a beam between the two players. A yellowish beam signifies you're within range. A red beam means you're too far apart. Once the brain has reached 30%, phase 3 will begin. Yogg's protective barrier will dissipate and he himself will be attackable. The brain room and upstairs need to thoroughly communicate the last chunk of the brain's health to ensure you do not start phase 3 with any crusher tentacles alive. But once it has reached 30%, the people in the brain room still need to click on the portals to exit. At this point, you want the whole raid to move a pre-designated area in the room, usually in front of Yogg. In this phase, no more tentacles will spawn, but you will have to deal with immortal guardians. These are very similar to the guardians faced in phase 1, but they spawn far more rapidly. They should be tanked away from Yogg because if they get close enough, they will put a buff on him that heals him. Secondly, they do a drain life spell that should always be interrupted. At the start of this phase, it is a good idea to have melee health kill the first few guardians to ensure range doesn't get overrun by them. Afterwards, have melee switch and burn the boss.